the 49ers schedule just came out. So I'm going to go through it game by game and predict winners and losers. And before you get worked up over my predictions, just remember, I predicted the 49ers would go 6-10 and 10 last season. So I'm not always right. Sometimes I'm very, 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 very wrong. Okay, let's get that out of the way. Week one, at home against the Arizona Cardinals. The Niners are better than the Cardinals. Uh, the Cardinals had one of the worst defenses in the league last season. They didn't do that much to improve it this offseason. That being said, the Niners did lose to an inferior team last year. They lost to the Falcons at home. What did the Falcons have going for them? Basically two things. They had an MVP quarterback, Matt Ryan, and an MVP caliber wide receiver, Julio Jones. Matt Ryan, you have to have an MVP caliber quarterback to beat the 49ers. If you have a, a mid-grade quarterback, someone like Baker Mayfield or Jared Goff, you're not going to win because those quarterbacks can't handle a good pass rush. They fold. MVP quarterbacks don't fold under a good pass rush. They've seen those things before. They can work under pressure. So that's one, one issue. The other issue is having the MVP caliber wide receiver. And I'm talking MVP, like top two or three in the league. Because teams can just put that guy on the left side of their offense and go to work against Emmanuel Mosley all day. Richard Sherman won't travel. Now, Sherman didn't play against the Falcons, but the same thing holds true. You put your all-world wide receiver on the left of your offense and go to work against Emmanuel Mosley, you can beat the 49ers. Uh, last season, the Cardinals gave the Niners real tough games twice now they have deandre hopkins deandre hopkins arguably is the best wide receiver in the league he can play on the left go against emmanuel mosley that's a really tough matchup for mosley then murray i mean he wasn't phased by the niners pass rush last season he's the quickest one of the two quickest quarterbacks in the league he can extend plays by time get the ball down to deandre hopkins it's going to be a close game uh, the niners are at home it's their it's their season opener They'll be favored. I'm picking the Cardinals. I think the Niners are going to start the season 0-1. Week two, the Niners fly to New York and play the New York Jets. Um, it's going to be a tougher game than I think people realize. And if the Niners do beat the Cardinals, I think they would go to New York and lose this game. I think they're going to start. Well, look, before I get that, I, this is tough. It's a 10 a.m. start. The Jets have Le'Veon Bell and the Niners run defense was suspect last year. Now they lost to Forrest Buckner. It could be a real weakness. So coming off an emotional game against the Cardinals, flying across country, playing at 10 a.m., that's a trap game. That being said, I'm picking the, the Cardinals to win week one, the Niners to lose week one. There's no way the Niners are going to start the season 0-2. So I'm saying even though the Jets should be able to uh, put up a fight against the Niners, I think the Niners are going to win week two against the Jets. And here's a stat for you. Last season, the Niners lost to four teams. Those teams had – who these, these were the quarterbacks of those teams. Russell Wilson. Lamar Jackson, Matt Ryan, Kyler Murray, all MVPs or MVP caliber players. Uh, I don't think Sam Darnold's there yet. So one and one to start the season for the 49ers. Win over the Jets week two. Week three, in New York against the Giants, another 10 a.m. start. This could have been tougher had this come later in the season. It's a real break for the Niners that it's back-to-back -back against uh, after playing the Jets. That means the Niners can just go to, can basically walk to Youngstown, hang out there, come back, be on East Coast time. Uh, this should be a win. Again, Daniel Jones is not an MVP caliber quarterback. The Giants do have an excellent running back, Saquon Barkley. Um, and he should be able to do well against the 49ers, but you can't just run and beat the 49ers. You actually have to throw the ball to uh, Niners start the season two and one. Week four, they come back and play the Philadelphia Eagles. Um, the Eagles do have an MVP caliber quarterback in Carson Wentz. He's a hell of a player, almost won the MVP a few years ago before he got hurt in 2017. Um, issue with Philly is I don't really like the rest of their team. They added a bunch of speed at wide receiver this year. They added Marquise Goodwin. He's not going to help. Uh, they have Alshon Jeffrey and Deshaun Jackson. Those guys are old and can't stay healthy. Their offensive line, other than their right tackle, Lane Johnson, everyone else is pretty much old or not that good uh, or a combination. They, have, they don't have a, an effective running game. They're trying to turn themselves into the Chiefs. The Chiefs added a bunch of speed. They put that around Patrick Mahomes. It worked for them. Um, to me, the Eagles just aren't as creative as the Chiefs. They're, they were an RPO gimmick team in 2017. That's why they won the Super Bowl, because the RPO was killing the league back then. Now it's not. They have no run game. They Their skill position players are weak. There's not enough help for Carson Wentz. This is going to be a tough game. It's going to be on Sunday night football, but I'm picking the 49ers to win. 
uh, start the season three and one. Next game, week five, at home against the Dolphins. Now, the Dolphins aren't that bad. Their coach, Brian Flores, really did a good job last year. He was a rookie coach, came from New England. The general manager was just trading off all the good players early in the season. He got that team to, to play hard despite the fact that management was doing a fire sale. It was like Major League, Major League, if you've ever seen that game, playing in spite of management. Anyway, they finished the season five and four. They won five of their final nine games. Um, they just drafted Tua Tagovailoa, who was very successful in college. Niners should win this game, though. I'm, I'm saying they start the season four and one. Next week, week six against the Rams. Um, we saw them last year. The first game against the Niners was embarrassing for Jared Goff uh, because he just crumbled against that pass rush. Second game, what Sean McVay did was basically roll out Jared Goff every single time, get him out of the pocket and away from Nick Bosa, and that was much more effective. Um, the problem with the Rams is they can't run the ball. They were good in 2017 and 2018 when they could run, and it wasn't just Gurley. It was a better, a better offensive line and a um, basically a gimmick in the run game, running out of three wide receiver formations that was befuddling the league. It ain't befuddling anyone. The league is fuddled now. So uh, I don't really think much of the Rams. I think they're going to finish last place in the NFC West next season. That's another win. So that's five in a row, five and one. Week seven, the Niners fly to New England. Always tough to play in New England, no matter who their quarterback is. They went 11 and five with Matt Castle in 2009. Jared Stidham's been in that uh, offense for a year, hasn't played. The Niners do have a break. It's a 125 game on the East Coast, so it's not an early game. They should beat Jared Stidham, even though it's Bill Belichick as well. So 6-1 and one to start the season, and I'm a tough grader. Week 8, the Niners go to Seattle. That's always the toughest road game. The Niners won in Seattle by an inch last year when Dre Greenlaw made that stop on fourth and whatever with the clock running out. Um, the Niners hadn't won in Seattle before then since 2011. They're coming off a really long road trip to New England. They're going to be tired. I'm picking a loss here. So I said, I'm saying they start the season 6-2. and two. Um, Next game is Week 9 at home Thursday night against the Packers. That's tough. Really two um, exhausting games in New England, in Seattle. You come home, you play a Hall of Fame caliber quarterback. Issue is we've seen the Niners play the Packers twice last season. The Packers aren't good enough, and they didn't make themselves better. A lot of people want to say that Aaron Rodgers is the problem up there, that he's been getting worse, and he has been getting worse, but he's not the problem. He has no team around him. Uh, he has one wide receiver, Devontae Adams, who's not an MVP caliber. He's good. The running back's okay. There's no number two uh, wide receiver. There's no tight end you have to worry about. The offensive line's nothing special. He carried that team to 13 wins last season. And now that it seems like they're kind of trying to run him out of town. They drafted a quarterback, a running back. They didn't help him at wide receiver. I don't take this team seriously. I think they're going to take a major step back next year because um, first year in, for a head coach, which is what they had last year with what was it Matt LaFleur, a lot of times he can – it's a carryover from the previous regime or, or, or the, the quarterback. Something else is driving the team that first year. But year two, it's the new coach. He's the driver. I don't think he knows what he's doing, and I think he's going to get exposed. Year two, Niners are going to beat the, uh, the Packers. Um, week 10, the Niners fly to New Orleans. That's always brutal to play in New Orleans. The Niners won on the last play in New Orleans last year, but they were struggling when Jared Cook was healthy. He scored two touchdowns and left the game early in the second quarter with a concussion. He'll be back. Uh, the Saints now have Emmanuel Sanders, who was a huge upgrade over Ted Ginn Jr. They're better. I'm not sure the Niners are better. They're, they're, they're cheaper. They're younger. Um, but I'm not sure they're better. This is going to be a very close game. I think the, the Saints are going to win it. So that's three losses. Now they got week 11. That's the bye. Week 12 on the road against the Rams. You know how I feel against about the Rams. I think they're a last place team. I don't think Jared Goff is good enough against this caliber of a, of a pass rush. That's a win for the 49ers. Week 13, Monday night football at home against the Buffalo Bills. The Bills are really good. They went, they went to the playoffs last year. Excellent defense. Excellent run game. Remember, I mentioned the Niners' run defense is an issue. So the Bills should be able to exploit that. But like I said earlier, you can't just beat the Niners running the ball. You have to have a very good quarterback. A, a very good quarterback. And um, the Bills don't. The Bills have Josh Allen, who's young, athletic, throws hard, uh, has upside, as the coach says, potential. But one of the most, if not the most inaccurate quarterbacks in the league 
the Niners do have the best pass defense statistically in the NFL. They should be able to handle Josh Allen, hold him to like 100 passing yards and win this game. Although I, it should be pretty pretty close because the, the Bills defense can do some similar things to Jimmy Garoppolo. All right, that's week 13. Week 14 at home against the, the Washington uh, win. I mean, the Niners beat him last year in, the, in a monsoon. Now they get him at home against Dwayne Haskins, who I still believe is worse than Case Keenum. Um, although maybe Haskins has improved. First round pick, we'll see. Another win for the 49ers. Week 15 on the road, Sunday night football at Dallas. Um, I'm assuming Dak Prescott will, be, will sign a contract and be their quarterback by then. Is he MVP caliber? I think he's borderline. He's young. He's played. He's put up extremely good numbers. He's mobile. He throws deep well. He's accurate. He's calm under pressure. I've seen him play live twice. He was lights out. And he really does have a great supporting cast. He's got a great offensive line, a terrific running back, although he's slowing down a little bit, Ezekiel Elliott, and three excellent wide receivers. And I think that's key because the Niners don't have a good secondary. If they go against a team with a mobile quarterback and a good offensive line, Dak should be able to have time to get the ball down the field to Amari Cooper. Amari Cooper is not going to be going against Sherman much. He'll be going against Emmanuel Mosley. You have CeeDee Lamb going against Kwan Williams. I, I the Niners have a weakness in the secondary, and I think the Cowboys can exploit it. It's going to be a close game, but I'm giving this one to the Cowboys. Final two games, week 16 at Arizona. I said why I think Arizona is going to win week one, and I think this game is going to be really tough too. But the Niners still are better than Arizona, and I don't think Arizona is going to beat them twice. They could pull it off once, um, but the Niners are better than Arizona. They should beat them. I'm going to, I'm going to pick the Niners week 16 especially because at this point coming into this game, I have them at 10 and four. Uh, so they need to make a, a push here to get the number one seed in the NFC. They're going to beat Arizona week 16, then week 17 at home against Seattle. They always finish against Seattle, but this time it's at home. They're better than Seattle. The Niners should win the NFC West. And uh, I don't envision them limping into the playoffs with a home loss against their division rivals. So I'm picking them to beat the Seahawks week 17 and I have the Niners going 12-4 and four next season. Uh, I had them going 6-10 and 10 last year, so take the 12-4 and four with a grain of salt, although this year I'm right. 